This short video is going to show you a little bit of how to form the tenons on these uh, very deep rails here. And we've seen these before as I made the molding on them seven and a half inches in, in the width of the board, the height of the rail. And instead of one single tenon, it's uh, divided up into double tenons at each end. So I'll show you the steps I go through to cut those. I've marked the tenon out, I've scribed the shoulders to it, and then, oh, I don't have the shoulder in the back. Ha. Uh, good thing I looked at that. So I mark it all out with an awl and a square, and then um, used a mortise gauge to define the placement and thickness of that tenon. And that uh, placement is 7 sixteenths from the face to the front of the tenon. And then the tenon itself is 3 eighths of an inch wide. Um, and all I do is um, grab it in this little wooden bench hook and try to brace it against there and saw the shoulder. I don't score it with a knife, you can. I used to score it with a knife and pair it with a chisel, now I just cut them. And oftentimes what I'll do when sawing is just run a block of beeswax across the teeth of the saw uh, to help keep things slipping and sliding. So it's a matter of holding it steady and being able to saw that. Uh, sometimes on this wide stuff, I'll start my cut at that edge and at this edge near the end near me. And then sort of lay the saw in those two. It's hard to see from this angle, so I'll do this again. But I'm tilting the saw to my right to get an undercut shoulder here. And then periodically pick it up and check my progress. I'm deep enough here. I can go a little deeper up far and an experience tells me that I'm often shallow in the middle. So I'm going to drag those teeth that right under the handle through there a little bit. Like that. So let me flip it around and uh, show you that front shoulder one more time. I'll get a different uh, angle for you. So now here I go again. So I'll hold my finger just here to keep the saw from skittering into the shoulder there. And then same thing back here. I think you can see the tilt on that saw blade. It isn't a lot, but it's enough to make a difference. So I have a little further to go there, and I'm right on the money here.
and then I do the same thing on the back shoulders um, with one caution this stock I think you can see is thicker at the bottom than it is here at the top and this pie shape is from splitting it out of the log uh, so I want to keep track of where I'm sawing here this piece of wood is sloping down towards me I don't want my saw blade um, to run parallel to that face I want it to run parallel to the bench so I'm I'm going to do more cutting here on this thick edge. See, and I haven't even hit back here yet. Uh, and I won't actually. It'll come, I don't know how well you can see this, but the layout line is right there. So that saw curve will come it'll just barely enter the wood right back here and I'm undercutting this shoulder a little bit as well so there I've got my depth and here I've got it as well so on to the next step. With this straight grain stock I split the cheeks off the tenons. I don't saw them. So I just pinch that chisel between my uh, fingertips and thumb and rest my fingertips on the end of the tenon and give that a knock. Ideally you want to avoid having the chisel hit the shoulder. And that's what your fingertips are there for, is to stop that forward motion. That's why I don't hold it up like this. Then you can pry if you need to. Like that. So I've come just in front of my line. And now I'll put the chisel right in the line. down and that's how they're split and do the back one and then we'll pair them at the bench so this is the the tenon as it's split and now I need to dress it to pare it down to an even thickness and there's lots of ways you can do this um, if you've got a, um, a shoulder plane, you can use that sort of thing. Uh, dress it in that way. It's slow going, but it makes a nice flat surface. This particular one being all metal, this wood has a little more moisture in that interior thickness of it. So you might get some staining on the tenon, but that won't matter. And uh, the function of this plane is that, that its blade will comes all the way out to the side, so it'll come right up to that tenon shoulder I cut. Uh, you can use that, but I don't. Um, this is a long-bladed paring chisel, very, very thin chisel it's not terribly wide and let me see what it is it's uh it's just an inch and uh, this is a real nice tool for forming these tenons because it will once you've got that uh, established it'll register on there and help you get a nice flat like that and uh, the thin blade and a low bevel angle really slices well and uh, and I often use this for pairing tenons but my go-to tool really 
is a big heavy one and this is a two inch wide um, framing chisel really for timber framing uh, this one is bevel edged some of them are straight sided there and I like it because of its width and its mass it will go through there pretty well And it's easy to go from here off the tenon. It's hard to come on to it. Uh, so what I tend to do is flip it over to this end of the back side. And pick it up to check my marks. Come back here. Next time I'm sharpening my planes and going to hone that chisel, I could use a little, uh, little attention. So there's one awkward move to get at the part I can't get here. So I want this to flip around on the bench hook to be that one. So now I can try it lefty, which I have. I can do it, but I generally sort of go under my arm this way. Hold the piece down with my left hand and come under there like that. Um, that's how I usually get at it. And oftentimes you'll get these shreds here that need to be paired. And you can use either chisel to get those you stand the chisel up on its edge like that to come at it. And here on the back, it isn't terribly critical if you hit that shoulder as you're making that pairing cut. But on the front, if you have to get in and snip some of those fibers, be sure you tilt the chisel away so that you're only using that corner of the chisel and you're not going to hit this shoulder because that shoulder is paramount. That's the most important part of the joint. So you don't want to uh, risk hitting that. And these wide rails are not a terribly common thing. Sometimes what I'll do is clamp them to the um, to the bench hook with a hold fast like that, and that gives you room to work both hands on the chisel. There's a tendency to sort of tilt the chisel this way, and then you end up making a pointed tenon, uh, which I sort of don't want and so I'm trying to emphasize keeping that corner down and working two-handed helps you do that the downside is it's not as easy to see your progress on that edge you have to either knock it apart or lean way over to see how you're doing and on narrow more normal sized rails, I never grab it like that. But it can help. So as I sight on this tenon, I still have too much right there. Might be my saw cut wasn't quite deep enough there. That 
looks pretty good. So what I want to look at is the relationship between that tenon face and this face. You want those parallel. And ultimately the one at the opposite end agreeing with this one so you can look at those in, uh, with winding sticks as well. So the next step after forming the tenon is to mark it out for where I'm going to cut apart uh, and form the two separate tenons for it. Each one gets a step at uh, top and bottom. I'll use a pencil so you can see it. And that one is simple. It's really um, in line with the, the depth of the panel groove there, uh, about half an inch. And the top is likewise. So that'll be a saw cut and a split. And then I make the tenons two inches wide. Uh, just because I didn't measure that level of detail when I studied these cupboards all those years ago. But that gets us close to what we need. So now uh, it's a matter of uh, cutting this stuff out um, and I'll show you first how to remove the, the two edges. I'm once again faced with the question of how to hold this stock for just making two little saw cuts of four of them really. So I'm just going to mount it in this uh, double screw here like that and you can then grab that with a hold fast windows are open now so the noise comes in and here it's a matter of just making a, a cross cut down to that line but again I'll reiterate you don't want to hit that shoulder so I'm staying just off of that with the saw. And I'll pair down to there uh, after I split that off. Uh, now the thin edge there. Same thing over here. as well do uh, both tenons. Then mark this one though. Here at the panel groove it's easy enough. And I'll just use my finger as a guide there. Get that one. As I said, what I usually do is split those off. So I can just trap it vertically like this to um, split these off. And it's just a little bop with a chisel. Bop. And then another one there. Now, to get the bit in between, what I'm going to use is a, a turning saw or bow saw. Uh, to get in there. But you see that sort of, if I'm sawing that, it's a little wiggly. So I'm going to take it out of this rack and hold it down here on the bench with a hold fast. So the leg of the bench is pierced with holes for the hold fast. And I'm just going to stand it right on that hold fast and put a block there to protect the face of it. And then grab that like so. I didn't even bother with that screw to tighten that for whatever that's worth, which is almost exactly nothing. And so then the turning saw has a very, very narrow blade in it, fine teeth. And um, so all I'm going to do 
is come down one tenon line there that I drew. And now I'm about three quarters of the way down, and now I'll start to bring this handle up to turn. there, back that out, and you can try to split that, you can pick up another saw and saw it, but I've got this saw in my hands. So that's how you get the bulk of that waste out, and then I'll clean up the excess with the chisel. I can take this saw and saw that down a little further right there. There you can see I've removed that stub that was left from the turning saw. And I just did that with a chisel and a mallet. The two things to keep in mind are don't hit this shoulder and don't hit your bench. So you could put it on a piece of scrap wood and chop that, much like when you're cutting out the waste and cutting dovetails. There's nothing uh, special about it. And then to finish off the tenons, I point the ends of them. I do that on all my tenons, unless I forget. And that's just a paring chisel to form a bevel on each uh, face, on the top and bottom face, or the front and back face. And it does a couple of things, maybe. Makes the tenon easier to get started into the mortise. And also, if at the bottom of the mortise there are torn fibers inside, that will help sort of mush down into those. So that's the end of cutting these double tenons. And then uh, there'll probably be some, some pairing to do when uh, fitting them to their uh, double mortises, but that's another step.